Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect your magnetic door switch to your alarm system. A magnetic door switch works as follows. I have my meter here, it's set to continuity. When I touch the two leads together, it makes a short circuit and you'll hear the buzzer and see zero ohms. If you have a look at the magnetic door switch, you'll notice that there's a glass window here or a glass tube and there's a reed switch inside there. That's very small contacts that come together when there's a magnet nearby. The one part of the contact is wired to that screw and the other contact is wired to that screw. When a magnet is brought close to the contacts, these two screws become short circuited. Right, so if you have a look at the setup I've got here, the two leads are on the door contact switch. My meter is showing open circuit, but if I bring a magnet, you'll see that the meter will change state and you'll hear the buzzer. So this is a neodymium magnet and it is a very strong magnet. And when I come close to the switch, it closes the contact, shorting it out. So therefore, when you install this, you will also need to install a magnet on the moving part of the door. So here is the magnet and there is the magnetic door switch. Right, to open your magnetic switch, there is a space there and there. I'm just going to use a screwdriver to pry it open. There you see. So I've opened both sides. Now usually you can just pull this open with your fingers. If it's still stuck, just help it along with your screwdriver. The magnet side has a clip over here. So I'll just put my screwdriver there and slide that out. Right, you'll notice that there are screw holes on each of these. So you can now go and screw this into the door and this into the frame. The moving part has the magnet. The stationary part has the door's magnetic switch. The reason being is the wire must be installed on the stationary part. The stationary part will then be on the frame. These do come in different colors, so you can choose the color that matches your door. Right, to connect this up is very straightforward. You'll need your cable. If you're using the brown ones, then you most probably will be using brown cable. The brown cable works very nice on face brick, but the most common installation is with the white cable and the white contacts. Not all cable is the same. Some cable is stranded and some is solid core. I'll quickly show you the difference. Here I have two different color cables, but they are both stranded. So if I expose the copper, here you can see the two white cores and you'll notice something about the copper. It has multiple strands. Look at that. Now over here I have a different cable and this is called solid core. This is the most common comms cable that you will find. Yours is probably like this. It's a single core. The color of the cable gives you an idea of the material used. You can see this is not copper. Copper has an orangey brown look, but don't be fooled. Sometimes the cable is just painted and it's aluminum inside. The only way you can tell is if you cut through the cable and look at a cross-sectional view to see if it is copper. For example, this is premium cable. This happens to be copper and I prefer to use high quality cable, which is especially useful if you have longer cable runs. Right, in this example, I'm going to use the blue and the white wire as my alarm trigger wires. Right, for a clean installation, you should decide beforehand if your cable is going to be coming from this side, this side, or that side. Why that's important is it also determines how much of the cable to cut. For example, if you have a look at the cover of the magnetic switch, you will see that there's a space for the cable over there or over here. I've already broken this tab. It used to look like that. If the cable is going to be coming through the top, for example, you'll just snap the tab. It's important to cut the cable at the right length. If you do not have enough space, you might want to come through the side. Then you'll just break open this tab on the side. Now in this case, I'm going to be using the flexible stranded cable because it's more difficult to work with, so I'd rather demonstrate that. I'm only going to be using the blue and the white wires for the alarm signal. You'll notice that the magnetic switch does not have any other terminals. It does not require a power source and only requires two wires. I thus do not need these remaining wires and I'm going to cut them off. Now the length of this is important because you don't want it to look like that when you're done. That will be unprofessional. Now most alarm systems require an end of line resistor to be connected in series with the normally closed contact. And the reason being is that provides a constant voltage across the terminals. Each alarm system is different. For example, some alarm systems want a 5600 ohm end of line resistor, such as the DSC alarms. Others such as the IDS alarm panels like a 3K3 resistor. Here is the 3K3 resistor in different sizes. How you read a resistor is based on the colors that are on the body. 
In this case, it is orange, orange, red with a gold stripe. So that is 3,300 ohms with a tolerance of 5%. Here are three different size resistors. The size of the body determines the wattage. For example, that is an eighth watt, quarter watt, half watt. Most alarm installations do not require much higher than a quarter watt. Now the resistor has to be connected in series. So all you need to do is cut the one leg, open the screws, decide which way the wire is going to be traveling. For example, is this going to be on the door in that orientation, is the wire going that way, or is the wire going to be going downwards? In my case, the wire is going to be going upwards. So now I insert the resistor just like that. I now tighten the contact. If you look closely, you can see that I do not tighten the contact too close to the resistor body. The resistor body must be able to move if it needs to be. Also, the resistor body should not be resting on any metallic surfaces. Now, in my case, I'm going to be using blue for the common and white for the positive. So I'm going to now expose the copper of just the white wire. And you can see that I've exposed quite a bit. And all I'm going to do now is wind it round this leg. If you live in an area where oxidation is a problem, solder this together. However, in the majority of installations, you do not need to solder the leads together. Right, I now cut the remainder of this and I just bend this inwards. Right, there you can see the resistor with the white wire connected. All I need to do now is connect the blue wire to the other contact. I just need to expose about 8 millimeters of this conductor. If you can, try to use wire strippers. You can also use your nail to expose the copper. If you use side cutters, just please be careful not to nick the copper. Twist the strands. If this was solid cable, you wouldn't need to twist it. Insert the copper under the plates and tighten the screw. If you look closely, you can see that the plates are fastening down on the copper. The jacket is not underneath the plates. If the jacket is underneath the plates, it does not make as good contact. Return your cover. In my case, I've already broken the tab. In your case, you might just need to break that tab. Right, there you can see the door contact switch has been wired. Now I just need to wire the alarm side. Expose no more than eight millimeters of the wire. Locate an open zone on your alarm panel. In my case, I'm gonna wire it to zone one. If you have a look, you'll see there's the positive and there's the negative. If I was wiring it to zone two, the positive wire would go here and the negative goes there. It's not mandatory to concern yourself with which is positive and negative because this is a series circuit. But just for accuracy, I did choose my blue cable as the common. So I'm going to put the blue cable in where the negative sign is and the white cable where the one is for the positive of the zone. There you can see the wires installed at the terminal. Notice you can still see a little bit of the copper on the outside of this terminal. And the reason being is you do not want the jacket to be inside there because it does not make as good contact. Right, so there's zone one is now a door contact zone. Right, so that is how you wire a magnetic door switch. In your case, you would have screwed these onto the door. Right, if you're gonna be gluing this along the wall, I recommend a cold glue rather than a glue gun because this is much easier. You make your line of glue on the wall like that, and how the cold glue works is after about a minute, it starts to solidify. I usually wait two to three minutes, and then all you do is you'll depress this into the glue at several places, and then it'll hold your wire. If your wire is very heavy, you might have to hold it in place for about 25 to 30 seconds. You can even use the cold glue to glue your magnet and your magnetic switch onto the surface, although the best practice is to use screws. Alright, thanks for watching and cheers.